Grace and peace to you, my dear brethren and friends, and my subscribers. Much grace and peace to you. I am Sister Karima Paris for the Thusia Seventh day Adventist Church, and I do welcome you again to another of our Bible studies as we continue to investigate this very important doctrine or this very important topic concerning the Catholic and Adventist Trinity 3 verses 1. So we want to continue this most important study. It is important for us to get it right. The Godhead. We need to get the understanding of the Godhead right. According to the scriptures. Not according, not according to the Catholic Church. Due to the ecumenism of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church, Seventh-day Adventist Conference Churches, with Babylon and her daughters, they have fallen into a snare. This substance, Trinity, affords the worship of the Pope. Yes, because of this understanding that the Catholic Church has concerning the Trinity, they can actually say the Pope is God. The Pope can actually declare himself to be the Vicar of Christ. Not this Pope, because this Pope is a communist Pope. He's on the side of the communists and he's doing all he can to destroy the Catholic Church. But when this Pope is removed and you get a traditional Pope that will accept the title of the Vicar of Christ, it is because of the understanding of the Godhead that they call the Trinity that affords them to exalt the Pope as God with God. Those declarations were made in history where Popes claimed to be the Vicar of the Son of God, the Vicar of Christ. They claimed to be the Holy Father, the way, the truth, and the life. All these evidence are there for men to see that as a result of believing that creation is God with God, that the body forms of Christ or the body form of Christ is divine, the three persons are divine, is what facilitates the idea of the Catholics that a Pope can be God with God. And thus the exaltation of man as God we showed you what this, where this pantheistic claim that creation could be God with God came from. We showed you that pantheism is of Satan. He is the first creation who said he could be like the Mosai. And history has shown us and declared to us the words and the deeds of the papacy, if we can start by looking into the fact that the Bible tells us in Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 25, that the papacy, it says, and he shall speak great words against the Mosai and shall wear out the saints of the Mosai and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of times. For 1260 years, the papacy reigned, having temporal power over civil law, where kings and magistrates 
protected the religion of the papacy and prohibited all other religions. This is what happened in history. And the religion of the Catholic Church was set up as state religions, so much so that you could have been persecuted for not accepting the dogmas of the papacy. And so this is what we are told. This idea of the Trinity, or this idea of a Trinity for the Godhead, is saying that God is creation. And this is what we want you to understand in our discourse. It is satanic to say that the persons are God. It is pantheism to declare that God is a substance. When you think about substance, substance is material. God is not shape, God is not form, God is not material. We showed you all of that in our study. And if I could just remind you of this very important slide concerning what we learn about the Godhead, not a trinity, the Godhead, this is what we saw. We saw that God is one, God is invisible, God is divine, God is spirit, God is God in nature, and God is love. There's nothing there, absolutely nothing there, that is material, that is a substance. And so we want you to look into the scriptures again with us. We would be reading some more of the statements from the Catholic Church as they define for us what the Trinity is all about. We'll look at some statements from the Seventh-day Adventist organization or World Church as well. We want to look at, at these two scriptures to begin this portion of our study it is significant that we do so and remember my dear friends this study that i am doing can actually be found in this book studies on adventism's evangelical gospel by nyron medina of the Tuesday seventh day adventist church We want you to get a copy of this book. It is about $18 US on, US on Amazon. You can get a copy of this book and you can study the history of Seventh-day Adventism. How is it they have an evangelical gospel, preaching an evangelical gospel and also have Catholic doctrines are among them. And all of this is because of their compromise. All of this is because of the snare the SDA has fallen into. In having ecumenism with the daughters of Babylon and with Babylon. They have given up their remnant status. In preaching the everlasting gospel that God has given to his people to preach. They have rejected that message. They no longer show Babylon and her daughters their sins. They no longer hold the pure doctrine of Christ. Christ is at the door knocking. If you do not have the doctrine of Christ, you do not have God. The Trinity is not the doctrine of Christ. Christ doesn't show us a trinity. His Bible, his words revealed from him doesn't teach us a trinity. It teaches us, of our, teaches us of the Godhead. And yes, we acknowledge that there are three persons that bear witness in heaven, but we do not say there are three 
divine persons because creation is not God. Creation is not God. There are two entities upon this earth. Only two entities upon this earth. And in this universe, in fact, it is God and creation. And creation could never be God. And God could never be creation. God is not a substance. He is not an essence. And we want you to consider, as we look at these statements, we want you to consider John chapter 1, verse 1, verse 2, and verse 14. This is where we want to talk about because of what we are going to see. In John chapter 1, verse 1, verses 2, and consider verse 14 as well. Why are we looking into this? Because you would see from the Catholic Church that they believe, as we showed last week, that God begot Christ from eternity. And then he came upon this earth through Mary. But look at what the Bible says. Very important. It tells us, In beginning was the word, you hear that? In beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So we are told in beginning was the word and the word was with God. Or he was pointing out the God. The Greek word for with being pros, P-R-O-S. So the word was active in pointing out the God and God was the word. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. We didn't see the Bible describe the word as the begotten son of God from eternity or from eternal. We see the Bible tells us about the word who was pointing out the God and the word was God or God was the word. That is all. Let us see who the Bible says came as a man, was born of a virgin. Did the Bible describe him who was born of a virgin here as the only begotten son of God from eternity? Let us consider verse 14. And the word, who? The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth. So it is the word who was made flesh. When he was made flesh, or when he put on humanity, then is when he is known as the begotten, the only begotten of the Father. Not from eternity, he was begotten of God. But we are told the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Let us consider also in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 5 what we are told. Is Jesus Christ the only begotten of the Father from eternity? Did God begot Jesus from eternity? Hebrews chapter 1 and we consider verse 5 which tells us 
For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Which of the angels God said that to? None. But what we are seeing is that at a point in time, Jesus was begotten. God said, this day have I begotten thee. So the day when he was begotten, he became the begotten son of God. The only begotten son of God is when he was begotten. Let us look at chapter 10. And let us consider verse 5, which tells us, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not but a body has thou prepared for me so a body was prepared for christ that is why john tells us that he became flesh and dwell among us because a body was prepared to house god hence the reason why we are told as we showed you this before in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians, let me get it correctly for you here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. So God, the one invisible divine spirit, nature, love, in Christ, in the body that was prepared, that body was prepared or made, therefore the body is not divine. You see, when the Catholics speak about an immaculate conception, all of those heresies is what caused them to have the idea and that somehow Christ's body was perfect. Somehow Christ is divine. The body is divine. The body of the person is divine. But here, that body of Christ, the Bible tells us it was sinful human flesh. Sinful human flesh. That is what the Bible tells us, that God had sinful human flesh like we have. And so the body cannot be divine. The body had infirmities, it had liabilities, and therefore the body is not divine. They are not three divine persons. Not according to the scriptures, which tells us here, and then we go into the quotations from the Catholic Church. We are told here. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness or sameness of sinful flesh and for sin condemn sin in the flesh in the same nights of sinful flesh because he has the he take on the body or the let me get the scripture as abraham he's of the seed of abraham according to the flesh that is what i wanted to remember the seed of abraham according to the flesh 
a body that was affected by sin. That is what he had. Not a divine body, not a perfect flesh, as the Catholic Church teaches. So all these heresies is what they hold and what will cause them to even exalt a man, the Pope, as God with God, as the vicar of the Son of God, because they believe God is a substance, and since he's a substance, then he is material, and since he's material, he is creation. And that is heresy. Satanic pantheism indeed, that is being propagated as the Godhead. Such blasphemy to even use the doctrine of Lucifer, the doctrine of Satan, pantheism, to describe the Godhead. What abominable heresy is that? Satan who was cast out of heaven for claiming that he will be like the Mosai, that he could be God with God, another word and you are using his doctrine to define and to explain who god is by saying god is a substance and this is what the adventist has accepted as a result of this snare of ecumenism Let us go into our study. Now we summarize for you the teaching of the Catholic Church. We summarized For you the teachings of the Catholic Church where we see what is taught regarding the Trinity by the Catholic Church they claim that Jesus has begotten divinity before all ages that the son proceeds from the father and was generated by him that is creation the spirit proceeded from both the father and the son the father son and spirit are three divine persons god and co-equal and co-eternal the three persons are all of one divine substance, homoousios. This is the substance of God, we are told, by the Catholic Church. This is what is being, what is being taught to man as the Godhead. Creation being God with God is being taught as the Godhead. So what we are going to consider is what Mr. Geoffrey Chapman in the Catechism of the Catholic Church has to say to us. We are told here, the only begotten Son of God eternally begotten of the father light from light true god from true god begotten not made co-substantial with the father end of good so we are told that the only begotten son of god is eternally begotten of the father he is light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. 
the idea that the Holy Spirit impresses upon the mind of the apostles and the disciples of Christ as they wrote concerning the revelation concerning divinity concerning the son shows that when Christ was begotten of the father a body was made for him God is not creation but creation a body was made for him so when one reads of the Catholic doctrine you see confusion we show you internal confusion that is how it is internal confusion because if he's begotten of the father and a body was prepared for him flesh was prepared for him to dwell in that flesh is a begotten it was made a body was prepared for him was made for him to dwell in god is not creation but the body is creation christ was literally a human being born so he's begotten he is made God put his substance together his body parts together in uh, his mother Mary the body that was put together is not divine we are told further but the oh, but the eternal origin of the spirit is not unconnected with the son's origin the holy spirit the third person of the trinity is god one and equal with the father and son of the same substance and also of the same nature end of quote let us read the confusion that is taught concerning the Godhead concerning the Trinity doctrine they are explaining to you the Catholic Church is explaining to you the Trinity doctrine this is what they say the only begotten Son of God eternally begotten of the Father light from light true god from true god begotten not made co-substantial with the father end of quote and this is from the catechism of the catholic church this is how they explain the trinity to you for the explanation of the trinity but the eternal origin of the spirit is not unconnected with the son's origin the Holy Spirit, so the Son and the Spirit has an origin. If something came into being at a certain time, it would mean that it has been created. It means that it has been created. If it has an origin, it means that it was created. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is God one and equal with the father and the son of the same substance which is material which is creation and also of the same nature we have shown you that god is divine in his nature god is divine in his nature but when you talk about substance you're talking about something that is material. Something that you could feel and touch. But God is invisible. His God is divine. God cannot be seen. Because he have not flesh and bones. He is spirit. So they sum up the Trinity as substance. The Trinity is substance. It is the God of substance. 
one substance or one nature is the Trinity, according to the Catholic Church, as they explain to us what the Trinity is all about. Notice they talk about the eternally begotten of the Father. So Jesus was eternally begotten of the Father, yet not made, yet he is of us one substance, the one substance they claim to be God. It is confusion. Confusion in the mind. Why not just simply follow what the Bible says about who the divine nature is, who the Godhead is? So, let us continue and let us look at this other one that tells us here. Okay. Okay. So, what else are we told by the Catholic Church in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, page 60? It says, We do not confess three gods, but one God in three persons, the co-substantial trinity, the divine persons, do not share the one divinity among themselves, but each of them is God, whole and entire. The Father is that which the Son is, the Son is that which the Father is, the Father and the Son that which the Holy Spirit is, that is, by nature one God. Each of the persons is that supreme reality. Namely, the divine substance, essence, or nature. Now, my dear friends, they are contradicting themselves. They claim we do not confess three gods, right? We do not confess three gods, but we confess one God in three persons, co-substantial. That is what they say. When you think about co-substantial, it is of the same essence, nature, right? That is what you think about when you think about co-substantial, of the same substance, of the same nature, of the same essence. When you think about substantial, it is belonging to substance, of the same material they are made up of. Okay? It goes on to say, the divine persons my dear friends if you're saying the persons are divine the father person is divine the son is divine and the holy spirit is divine that is three persons that are god that is three gods being explained they go on to say, the divine persons do not share the one divinity among themselves, but each of them is God, whole and entire. So the three persons, one, two, three, Father, Son, and the Word, uh, Father, Son, and the Spirit, three persons. Divine, divine, divine. They are not sharing, we are told, the one divinity. In other words, it is not God in them that makes them God. But they have the same substance. So the Father has the same substance in entirety. The Son have the same substance in entirety. The Holy Spirit has the same substance in entirety. 
That is three different things. That is three divine persons, as they call it. That is three gods. They say by nature, one God. So you have three things, three persons, but in nature, one God. Each of the person is supreme. Each of the persons is that supreme uh, reality of the one God. So the Son is the supreme uh, reality of the one God. The Father is the supreme authority of the one God. And the Holy Spirit is the supreme author, um, reality of the one God. We are still seeing three. Three divine persons. How is it they are the one God they are saying? They are saying each of them in their makeup, in their substance is God. That is what they are saying. So they are actually telling us it's three persons, three God. Look at what they de define it to be. On page 60, the divine unity is triune. The divine unity is triune. That is three gods. Do not let them fool you. The Bible declares, Yeah, O Israel, Yahweh, our God, is one Yahweh. One Yahweh. And you know what he said in Isaiah 42 and verse 8? His glory he will not share with another neither his praise to graven image or images you know what else he said he said he alone is god that he doesn't know any creation no formed gods he said so god is numerically one god and we'll come to see it. We'll come to see the words that is used to define one. And we'll show you it means numerically one God. We may not be able to show it today. But we will certainly come to show you. Because in all their talks. To say they are not saying three gods. They come down to tell us the divine unity is triune. Which means three gods. Which means three gods. Because after all, they claim God is a substance. Substance is material. Substance could be touched and felt. And seen. That is material. I can feel the the. I could feel the mouse because it is a substance. It is what it is made up of. It is made up of plastic, hard plastic. I can feel the mic. It is substance. The substance that it is made of is hard plastic with some other material there. Whether it is aluminum, but the fact is, the substance that it is made of is material, is creation. And that is what we are getting from the Catholic Church as the Trinity, as their Godhead. Creation being God with God. That is what we are getting. So what else are we told here? So we see they, they, they show us plainly it's three gods. It's three gods. And we have the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In ecumenism with them, they have fallen into Disney. And in being fallen into Disney, they will end up worshipping the Pope. Through the mark of the beast that is going to be set up very soon as the image of the beast is set up in America. 
that image of the B system is a system that the papers like what the papacy had in the past control over civil law this is what it is leading to you cannot believe that God is a substance and pass the final test because you are actually believing that God is creation the popes claim to be the vicar of Christ as a result of claiming that God is a substance you are actually submitting yourself to saying the papacy is God with God the Pope is God with God so let us see how far we could reach again let us see here what are we told as we look at those quotations as we see the internal contradiction in the imperfect explanation of their trinity we see from them that they claim there are three gods all united together in their god substance that is what we are really being told that there are three gods all united together in their god substance we are being told that divinity is substance with one father we are being told that divinity is substance with one substance the father begetting the substance of the son before time began does this implies that jesus is a divine substance that was literally born before time although this is denied in various ways in the catholic ex exegesis we are told the unity of these three god substances is that their substances are all the same coming from the father this is essentially what a triune god or three divine persons or the trinity means so the trinity means three god substance the trinity means that the substances are all the same coming from the father and does he have three divine persons this is what we are taught by the catholic church concerning their explanation of their trinity with all the confusion with all the contradictions in it their imperfect explanation of their trinity and it is so sad so horrifying that the sda organization has fallen in this snare through ecumenism because you see the catholic idea of the trinity is what will cause men to exalt the pope as the vicar of christ because if god is creation you could have obedience worship to the papacy as god with god as was done in the past as the vicar of christ as as the what they call him the success of peter who sits in seat in peter's chair and who is infallible in his words when he sits on that chair when they the fallen protestants work miracles to cause the image of the beast to be set up all of this is what will cause this wrong understanding of the divine nature 
of the Godhead will cause the worshipping of the Pope as in history. The Bible tells us she would sit a queen and say she's no widow. She would reign over the kings of the earth again. Why? Because her dogmas will be taken under the care and protection of the state. Even the dogma of the uh, social kingship of Christ, the dogma of Sunday exaltation as the means for bringing in a long expected millennium. And so, we cannot accept a trinity. As an Adventist, we cannot accept a trinity. Let us see what we could cover here concerning what the Seventh-day Adventist Church believes in priorities. Priorities, January 2012, Joanne Davidson. God in three persons, Blessed Trinity, page 18, 19, 20, and 21. That is what we want to look at. So while the SDA, while the SDA church let me get it for you. While the SDA Church do not explain the Trinity concept as clearly as does the Catholic Church by expressing certain positions on the Godhead, the SDA Church has presented the Catholic position on the Trinity. Here is the three divine persons concept. We are told here, Biblical evidence has three facets a there is one god b three in oneness and three persons who are god you hear that three persons who are god it was the biblical witness of these divine persons we are told so they have the catholic trinity idea being expressed of three divine persons that is what they have and that is what is cause will cause the trouble for them they will become sunday law susceptible by accepting this false idea of the godhead the satanic idea of the godhead that creation is God with God. They go on to tell us on page 19 of this same priorities. Peter named three divine persons at Pentecost. Divine persons, that is three gods. Paul often speaks of the triune God relating salvation to three persons of the Trinity. This is this is this is Adventist speaking. The three divine persons are equal but not identical. This is what we are told by the Seventh day Adventists. They actually have on the priority magazine cover. That one plus one plus one equal one, the Trinity. That one plus one plus one is one, which is the Trinity. So you have three equal one, and that is the Trinity. That is the triune God of the Catholic Church that exalts creation to be God with God. And this is the horrible thing that has taken place, has taken place and taken over the, the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church because of the sneer of ecumenism. They confess a triune God. They 
So what are we told? As we consider what is wrong with the Adventist concept of the Godhead, they speak of a three in oneness. What this means is God as three united in one. This is a united divinity, like the Catholic Church, the triune God. This is a united divinity, not a numerically one divinity with, one, with no regards to the person forms. This is a united divinity, not a numerically one divinity with no regards to the person forms because the person forms are not God. We want you to understand that if you say the person forms are God, you're saying creation is God. That is our plea. Creation is not God. There are only two entities on the earth, God and creation. And for God to accept this is for him to deny his oneness, his holiness. It, in essence, it is for you to be saying that Satan was right in his argument that creation could be God with God and God don't know that creation could be God with God. That is what he told Eve. And so God is accepting Satan's lie that he know that creation could be God with God because of the Trinity, the triune God, the divine persons. They speak of three divine persons, not one divine nature. Thus the persons are thus divine and independent of each other. So that is three gods. That is three gods. If the, 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 the persons are divine and independent of each other, that is three gods. That is the trinity. Not one divine nature in the three, as is shown concerning the incarnation of Christ. But this is the snare as a result of ecumenism. This is what happens when the church compromise. They accept false doctrine, the drink of the cup of Babylon. So they speak of three divine persons, not one divine nature. Thus, the persons are thus divine and independent of each other. This is three divine gods as persons in rational reality. Amen. They speak about a triune God. God is not triune. Or three united persons. God is numerically one, my dear brethren and friends. Numerically one. They speak of God as three persons. This really means the three persons. However, the persons of the Godhead are not God. But God is God in the three persons. The divinity of God. The divinity of God. Has no reference to the three persons but God's divinity is in the three persons however what these points as taught by Adventism imply are the following if the three persons are divine then there are three divinities that make up God. Each divinity is therefore God. And this equal three gods. If each divinity is thus not separately God, 
then this is a different divinity. That while being divine is not God. God is thus three, not one. Let me read this over for you. Very important. If the three persons are divine, as they say, both Catholics and Adventist cities, if the three persons are divine, then there are three divinities that makes up God. Each divinity is therefore God. And this equals three gods. If each divinity is does not separate the God, then this is a different divinity that while being divine is not God. God is thus three, not one. Two. If God is three persons or triune God, then God is not one divine nature. God is also not spirit, but is persons. Persons cannot dwell in the converted man. Think of that. God dwells in you. He comes in you at justification. And if he's persons, he cannot dwell in you. Therefore, you are left depraved. Because the depravity of man is not having God. So when God converts the man or justifies the man, he must get God dwelling in him. But if God is persons, how can he get God in him? How can he really be converted? It is, so we are going on, we are told, one plus one plus one cannot equal one. They even fail in mathematics. They fail in mathematics. The Adventist church fail in mathematics. A church that was developed and born out of prophecy, Bible prophecy, that requires the understanding of additions. And now they are telling us to cover for their Trinity doctrine that one plus one plus one is is one, sorry. One plus one plus one is one, the Trinity. And Brother Medina is telling us, which is true, that one plus one plus one cannot equal one. But if this is how God is explained, then the persons are God. And it is not that God is in the persons according to how the Bible puts it. Oh, it is this divine person's concept that rationalizes the claim that Jesus came in sinless flesh. It also justifies the divine blood of Jesus' teaching held by evangelicals. However, my dear friends, as we come to a close here, we will have to look into this further. We want to prove to you in our next recording that God is really numerically one. We want to look at these three scriptures as we come to a close. What are the facts concerning the Godhead? God is not the persons. 
God is the divine nature. Let us look at it in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 8. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 8. God is not the person's God is the divine nature. This is what we are told. How be it then? When ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. You see that? God is God in his nature, in his being, in his makeup. He is not persons. He is not the persons. He is the divine nature in his nature, in his makeup. He is God, not a substance. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. It is a horrible thing in the eyes of God because this doctrine substantiates or vindicates Satan's claim that creation could be God with God. And Seventh-day Adventists believe it. This is what we are told in verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss so you become partakers of the divine nature if the persons are divine how are you going to partake of them how is the persons going to dwell in you to cause you to be a partake of the divine nature god is in the three persons just as is seen that god was in the body of christ let us look at it again. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19. To wit, that God was in Christ. Let me read it over. Because it is showing us it is not the person that is divine, but God himself is divine, my dear people. God himself is divine. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation that is how it is explained that is how it is supposed to be understood the persons are not god the persons are not divine the meaning of the word divine the very word divine my dear people it means God. Divine is God. The persons that was created are not God. But God was in the persons. This is where we come to an end. Please. We beseech you, therefore, brethren. And friends I want to read a statement from brother Nairon Medina of the Thursday Seventh-day Adventist Church he tells us this and I want you to think about it 
A trinity is one substance. And this is creation. Because God is not three with one substance. But since the Pope is of the substance of God as they claimed, then it is arrogant man that is the God that is worshipped. So they all become arrogantly rebellious like their God, the Pope. End of quote. He made this statement as we consider the persons, the organizations that will be involved in causing the image of the beast to be set up according to Revelation chapter 13. 13 and 14, we are told that and Revelation 19, 20, we are told how the false prophet will work miracles to cause the image of the beast to be set up. The image of the beast, the beast is the papal beast, is the papacy to be set up. That image of the beast is a religious system, a religious governmental system, because the doctrine of the Catholic Church becomes protected by the state. It's like having temporal reign and power over civil law. So you have the papacy having a communal system where communism, because it is against rights and freedoms, yet religion is going to be established by law. It is the same with the fallen Protestants. They will have the same kind of communal system where communism, anti-rights and freedoms in their behavior, yet establishes religion, even the religion of the papacy in the doctrines that they embrace, the doctrine of Sunday exaltation is one. The social kingship of Christ is another. The false justification is another. And so it would be the Pope in the end, according to Bible prophecy, that will be worshipped, obedience, worship will be given to the papacy. And you know what we are told in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 3 and 4? That when they worship the papal see the papal see that Satan will be worshipped too because he is the one who has given it, the papacy its power, seat, and great authority according to Revelation chapter 13. So my dear friends, we come to an end. But notice, the Trinity doctrine is false. It is satanic. It will not benefit anybody. It would only cause men to be exalted as God with God and Satan to be exalted as God with God. Obedience, worship to them. And you cannot be saved in that condition. So we pray for you that you would give it up. You will not accept it. You will accept the truth as it is in Jesus. That the bodies are not divine, but the divine nature dwelt or dwells in the bodies. Let us pray. Loving Father, the one invisible divine spirit nature love, who dwells in three persons, in the office of will, mediator and the creative agency we bow to your oneness i bow to your oneness because you alone is god you alone is glory you alone is will 
you alone create. You alone is life. You alone is savior. You alone is eternal grace and truth. You alone is righteousness. And we pray for the people that they will accept this. They will give up the Trinity so that they will not have obedience, worship to the beast and his image and to Satan during the Sunday law that is before us. But they will worship the one God who reveals himself in the three persons but the persons are not God. Help us all to prepare for the end that is swiftly coming. Grant us the latter rain as we sanctify ourselves in obedience to the truth that we will have beachheads across the seas and that the genuine ones in Seventh-day Adventism will join in the fight against the hyper-selfish one, the Pope, who claims to be God with God, on the side of the Thusia, with the experience of Thusia, or self-denying love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.